listening to PetLifeRadio.com. I'm Smelly the dog. I am a mutt. I'm Smelly the dog. I'm super smiley. I have a cat too sweet to travel kitty. I have a big girlfriend and he's really pretty. I have a pony. We share a big horse. We have a big yard. Yeah, we have to, of course. I have a pool. In the summer, I stay cool. Do a fountain. Live in the mountain. Live high on the hump. Need to be a spokes dog. I'm Smiley the dog. Wolf and Super Smiles, welcome to a Super Smiley adventure on Pet Life Radio, the largest pet radio network in the world. I'm Megan Blake, the Pet Lifestyle Coach, here with my sidekick, Giant Mutt, Super Smiley. On our show, we explore adventures where animals lead. They can be journeys for animal advocacy, for adventure and fun, and they almost always lead to paths of inner discovery and greater bonding with our pets. And this is where we are headed today with our guest. Lou Spirito is a writer and journalist and has written for the New York Times, Good Housekeeping, Men's Fitness, and Brides Magazine, just to name a few. And he has film scripts at Universal Studios and Triumph Pictures. And Gimme Shelter is his new book, which can be described as The Sopranos meets Marley and Me about his rescued pit bull. Welcome, Lou Spirito and your rescued pit bull Tanner to a super smiley adventure. Hi, Megan. Thanks for having us on. Oh, you're so welcome, Lou. We're so excited that you're here today. And I want everyone to know that Smiley and Tanner are friends <laughs> from Malibu, from our Malibu dog park and um, the Way Cool Coffee Shop here. We love running into you every once in a while, Lou. Yeah, it is good to see you guys. I love seeing you at the park. Smiley and Angel. Let's not forget Angel, too. Right. That's right. There you go. So we're talking about Malibu, and we're coming to you today from our Malibu studios from a Super Smiley adventure. But, Lou, you are from New Jersey with a very colorful background. I mentioned The Sopranos, and I will say no more. But you describe yourself as an angry guy living as an actor, the life of sex, drugs, disco back in New York City, um, the Vita Loca crazy life, I think think you called it, then throw in that you're a martial arts master, have some interesting family ties, and you've written a book that very specifically deals with your journey through anger management and Tanner's path, moving right there with you, right? Yeah, it wasn't originally meant to be a book, Megan. You know, this started out, it was, I don't know why, and sometimes you don't know why. I kept a diary of the first year we had Tanner when we rescued him from the Agoura Hills Animal Shelter, who are great people and do great work, and they do their best to keep the dogs with them for as long as they can until they get them adopted. So we want to give them a big shout-out. But I kept the journal, and I really didn't know what I was going to do with it. Somebody just told me to keep a journal, which I'd never done before. I'm not a big diary guy. Didn't do a lot of that back in Newark, New Jersey. <laughs> okay. And, uh, you know, you didn't keep any records back in Newark, New Jersey. It could be used against you. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, so we had the journal. And about a year after I had the journal done, Eugenie, my wife, said, you know, this should be a book. And I was like, boy, I don't, I don't know. And she had been bugging me to do a, a dog story about our relationship. We've been together almost 30 years, and we met in New York right after my Vita Loca period. And, you know, she's always bugging me, but people always bug you when you're a writer and you go, oh, you should write a puppet play or you should, all kinds of crazy ideas that they think are great. But I ignored my wife at my own peril. And for all you husbands out there, bad idea to ignore the wife. Uh, <laughs> okay. Bad, bad idea. And she kept saying, write a dog book. And I didn't. And then with this diary, she said, this should be a dog book. And I gave it a hard look. And I said, you know, I think she's right. The problem was I had 500 pages of diary and no idea how to shape the material. Since it hadn't, I hadn't thought of it as a writing project, I hadn't shaped it. So I had to dig through it countless numbers of drafts and revisions before it finally dawned on me that while a lot of it was about Tanner's journey coming from the shelter to live with us, the real guts of the story was about my journey with him getting past this anger that I'd had my whole life. And I so, love that. that. I love that theme, Lou. Here on A Super Smiley Adventure, one of our topics of conversation always is that animals are healers and they are teachers. And usually I bring up this topic towards the end of our show, but today obviously we're jumping right in because that is what you're talking about. And I want to hear more about you, Lou Spirito, and the raging bull from New Jersey who has honed his anger into an art form and helped find his path with the help of his rescued pit bull Tanner right after this short break. Smiley, can you wait? Good boy. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. I'm Smiley the Dog. I'm Super Smiley. Let's rock. Keep on. Keep on. Keep on. Pet Life Radio has dug on fur-flying fan 
fantastic deals for our listeners. Go to PetcoDeals.com and get $6 off your order of $60 or more and up to 40% off hundreds of items at Petco. PetcoDeals.com. But, but that's not all. Are you talking to me? Pet Life Radio listeners, try Audible.com now and get your first 30 days of Audible Listener Gold Membership Plan free. And get a free audiobook. Choose from over 100,000 titles. To get this great deal, go to AudibleDeals.com. That's AudibleDeals.com. The new Dyson Animal Vacs are powerful bagless upright vacuums for homes with pets. Air muscle and radio root cyclone technology generates the strongest suction power to powerfully remove dust, dirt, and pet hair from the home or car. Go to DysonDeals.com. DysonDeals.com to order your Dyson Animal Vac today. Go to PetSmartDeal.com and save up to 30% on awesome gifts for the pets and pet people in your life. Toys, collars, leashes, pet smart gift cards, treats, and more. Go to PetSmartDeal.com today. P-E-T-S-M-A-R-T-D-E-A-L.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. We're back on a super smiley adventure with smileys and my dear friends, author Luz Burrito and his rescued pit bull, Tanner. And Lou, we have so many authors on our show, all with great discoveries and information. But what I love about your book, Gimme Shelter, is that it is so brutally intimate. Tell us why you chose to reveal your journey. You just said you thought it was going to be a book about Tanner's journey, but it ended up being one about yours. Tell us how that happened. Well, the personal part of this, I was reluctant. First of all, I think if you have an anger issue, it's really a tough problem for people to deal with, and men seem to have the market cornered on it, although lately because women are equal to men in every regard, they're getting angry too. So (laughs) we have an epidemic of anger in America, and it's a tough subject to deal with because very often you don't admit you have the problem. You couch Mm -hmm. it in other terms because underneath anger is fear anyway. You're afraid of something. That's why you're angry. Right, and defensiveness. And And if you're you're defensive already, somebody telling you you have an anger issue is just going to make you more defensive, it seems to me. Is that correct? More angry, actually. So it's a very tough subject for people to bring up. And as I started working on the story, the thing that was lacking was, okay, I keep saying I'm an angry guy, but that doesn't mean anything. You need it in context. How did you become angry? Why were you angry? What caused this problem? I really didn't want to do the finger pointing thing. And, you know, it's done a lot. People point to my mother or my teacher or my sports coach and they go, that's the reason my life is a mess. But I did have to reveal some of the family dynamic in order for people to get a sense of what it was like and how we just took this volatile environment which is pretty crazy for granted and uh, so that's how that found its way into the book and people really seem to like that part and I love the way that in your book you actually marry these two critical topics the anger management and the dog rescue you weave them together into a, a theme that just works perfectly together right I think they do, and I'm pleased to hear you say so, too, because, I, yeah, I, I think they do. I think, especially when you have a pit bull, I know Smiley's not a pit bull, but Smiley... He's Smiley's a big old terrific. dog, though. <laughs> yeah, he's a big he's old a dog. Big, he's a scary, yeah. He'd be a scary guy, too. <laughs> pit bulls are what? They're dogs that people think of as big, tough, aggressive, mean dogs. That's the stereotype that's given them such a bad rap. And the truth is, particularly with a dog like Tanner, he's anything but. Megan knows Tanner, and he's kind of a timid guy. He's a big, hulking, 65-pound pit, and he is afraid of rabbits and cats and loud noises and fireworks and Santa Ana winds. And, and now he's, that's him at a good place. When we first came to us, if you scuffed your foot or dropped a newspaper or broke a dish, the guy went flat and cringed waiting for a beating or worse. Oh. So in many ways, Tanner and I were the same. I want to just interject in there about you're talking about Tanner's personality. I loved a quote from your book. You say that you were in love with a cowardly pit bull that was dragging you kicking and screaming into a long delayed adulthood. So how did Tanner do this? Like you said, you dropped the newspaper, then there's a dog, you know, trembling on the floor. How did this happen? What happened? Well, Megan, it took a while. And my wife, again, shout out to the wives. They seem to have yeah, a handle I, I on love telling you, us. Jeannie, I want to say, hey, Jeannie. <laughs> yeah, she'll be in in a little while. She's working, but she said to say hello to you. You know, human beings give us a pass, right? So if we have an issue, and mine was this volatile temper, where just about anything could set me off, 
you can excuse it by going, well, but the guy's a good guy otherwise. He's loyal and he's smart and he's creative and he's generous. We do that for anybody we love who has an issue of any kind. Dogs, I think, and you can back me up on this, they're a little simpler and more basic. It's either yes or no. You're safe or you're not safe. And I couldn't understand why Tanner was having such a hard time around me. And Eugenie just pointed out, she said, for him, you're just too scary to live with. You have wow. too much anger in you. That's a powerful and that statement. that was a slap. Yeah, yep. too scary to live with. Let me interject here. Also, Lou, I, I love the way you said that he was ignorant of your positive qualities. That's what you're talking about. And the way I describe yeah. that is that dogs are not prejudiced. You know, we humans, we're constantly judging. We'll see a woman with a child. That's who she is. Three high school boys hanging out. That's who they are. You know, well-dressed man getting out of an expensive car. That's who he is. We automatically judge, but dogs don't. They see a human and evaluate who they are without prejudice, what's right in front of them. I think that's that's another way of saying what, where you're going with this, right? Exactly. He's like a, they're emotional Geiger counters. They measure mm-hmm. energy and the energy right. is either positive and good and safe or it's not. Right. They, they don't draw very fine distinctions. And that's right. what happened with us. And so I had to really, you know, I'd done some work on myself and martial arts had helped. And I'd, Eugenie and I had been through couples counseling before we got married. And, you know, I'd, I'd made some efforts at it. I wasn't totally unconscious, but I really thought I had a pretty good handle on it until Tanner came along. And then I realized I was really going to have to go back and do some transformational work, not just kind of nibble around the edges with it. And that right, was a and, tough thing to do. And the Rolling Stones, you quoted them in your book, too. What was that quote? You don't get what you want. Well, but. <laughs> yeah, you don't always get what you want, but you get what you need. There I you think, go. you know, <laughs> yeah, listen, in Tanner's case... And I, I make no bones about it. I wanted another Irish setter like the dog I'd had when I was a wild man living in New York City in my 20s, a wannabe actor, just having a ball of a time being crazy. And I had mm-hmm. this rollicking John the Irish setter named Rebel, who was my sidekick. And he was great, but he hadn't been an abused dog. He was a rescue dog, but he was just rescued because his owner had to give him up. And Rebel was great. And I wanted another Irish setter. And we got one right before we got Tanner. And that was didn't turn out so well. And 25 years between Irish setters, I guess, showed me I needed a different dog. And that dog's name was Reggie, and Reggie wasn't well, so he had to go back to the rescue group to be treated. We were very depressed, and I was convinced Mm -hmm. I would never, ever get a dog as good as Reggie again. And about one day after we gave him back was when we found Tanner. Yeah. As if he was waiting for me. It's like you were almost meant to give back the other dog. I know that I believe that whenever you get a dog, you should always keep it. But I know sometimes there are circumstances, like you just mentioned, your dog needed to be treated. And obviously, you are meant to have Tanner to share this story with the world. And you also describe Tanner as an emotional Geiger counter. And um, Lou, you know my dog, Angel, who also came from the Agora Shelter. We love the Agora Shelter. But she had been abandoned four times, one time in the desert. And she also is a very insecure submissive dog and she's the same way way tanner is as a geiger counter she can tell if you're just feeling something even if you aren't expressing it overtly she can just feel it and she had been labeled as berserk because she'd been turned into the shelter four times because people couldn't keep her she would jump up on you but it wasn't that she was a berserk german shepherd it's that she literally was that scared she would go into these big panics so it is amazing how dogs can act as mirrors which i think is what you're saying tanner was doing for you showing you Oh, how for you, sure. Yeah. So tell me some more about yeah. Tanner and how he did that for you. Well, in the beginning, it was very tricky because we knew we had a delicate dog. You could tell that. And, you know, so I tried to curb my behavior, which is still tricky. That was tough in and of itself. You know, try not, if I lost a computer file, not to be screaming and swearing and, you know, <laughs> storming about, which Eugenie just takes for granted as part of having a crazy Italian husband, right? She, that was fine with her. Okay. Uh, Tanner didn't. It wasn't good for him. And then when I curbed that and I thought I had done that, it still wasn't enough. And that was when poor Eugenie had to break the news that it's, you know, it's who you are is the problem, not the behavior. Yeah, but you've got a handle on that. But you've got so much anger, the dog's afraid of you. And so, you know, everybody has their own way. I was lucky. I had some, my wife and some friends who were studying this thing called Course in Miracles, Mm -hmm. which is kind of, I think of it as a philosophy group. For me, I don't, everybody finds what they find. I had been introduced to Buddhism. I had been raised Catholic. I had been to counseling, but this kind of gave me a very hands-on, I needed application. How can I actually begin to try and change myself when I don't have a clue? And with Tanner was there to measure me every day to see if I was doing better or worse. So I reached for everything I could. I used Pema Chodron's Buddhist tapes, 
personal meditation, more Tai Chi. I used everything and really worked on just trying to change myself more than my behavior, and that was not easy. And I'd say, you know, we, I've made a very good dent. I say I'm a recovering angry guy because you're never fully out of it. But right. Tanner seems to think I'm safe now. Oh, he, Tanner looks like he point. just loves you. you know, he, he loves you. Let me ask you before you tell me about the turning point, because I have a question before that. There's just so much sure. to cover here. And Gimme Shelter, you know, you went through the period where you're earning the confidence of Tanner, which is exactly what you're talking about right now. And it reminds me, I want to share with you, of an interview I did in prison with a pups in prison program I was working with. Mm-hmm. And I asked a prisoner what he had learned from his dog. And he said that he had been in and out of jail multiple times. And he never learned this from his counselors, you know, his his church people, his family, his parolee officer. But now he realized because he had to earn the respect of the dog that when he got back out into society, he had to earn the respect of the people. And no human had taught him that, but the dog had taught him that. So what was your experience in earning Tanner's trust? How did you do that with him? I would say, you know, that's a tough question to answer because it came in stages, and I talk about this yeah. in the book, where okay. you, would, you go forward and you think you're doing pretty well. You know, you go on a period, and the big problem for us, it was fu- it's funny now in retrospect, was that Tanner liked to vomit in the car. Well, he didn't uh, like to vomit in the car. He just vomited in the <laughs> it car. Just happened. Okay. And from the day we brought him home from the Agora shelter, that afternoon on the way home from the shelter, he threw up for the first time. And mm-hmm. we I dismissed it as, you know, well, the poor dog, he's dragged out of his environment yeah. where he's been for yeah. seven weeks and he's got new people. But it seemed like every time he got in the car, and I mean every time, I was cleaning up a mound of soggy kibble. And it, it was, you know, it's not pleasant. And it always got me annoyed. And, oh. and it was triggering the very thing I <laughs> couldn't do with this dog. Yeah. So we tried anti-nausea meds. We thought it was motion sickness. And then someone, and I don't remember who, you know, Megan, it could even have been you that I met early on. (laughs) I don't remember. It was at Point Doom, so it might have been you. Or some very nice person said, you know, he may have been a bait dog because he had scars on his neck and he had scars on his belly and a little scrape on his nose which looks like teeth marks and he's so timid that if you know he's a big look strong looking dog and if somebody had him and they thought they were gonna have a fight dog boy were they mistaken so Mm -hmm. maybe they went the other way with him used him as a bait dog but whatever it was the guy would was just scared of the car every time we got in there was a mess and it was like my daily reminder practically you have to change and earn this dog's trust for him not to be so scared and throw up and be upset and shake and quake and, uh, you know, it was little things working when, you know, Pema Shodron, the Buddhist teacher says, practice with the little stuff because you know life will throw you the big stuff eventually. So right, if you're stuck right. in traffic, don't get upset. If an email gets deleted, don't get upset. Practice right. on, if you overcook the pasta, don't get upset. I'm not joking. It was anything like that which set me off. And what do they say? So, they say that when you need a lesson, the teacher will appear. That's not exactly the way it is. But what is that? You know what I'm saying? The no, teacher yeah, will appear. No, yeah, when the appear. student is ready, the teacher the will appear. Ready. And mine, there you go. <laughs> mine bounced in on four legs. There you go. I and, think that that happens. he was when, relentless. Yeah, and animals are relentless in that way because they're constantly reading our energy and our body language. And I'm going to say energy again because it doesn't even have to be what you're actually doing but it's what you're feeling and I I oh, love who this you about are, my animals right? who who you are to the core and I want to hear about how you're making this a positive campaign for other shelter animals but first let's take a quick break and we'll be right back smiley can you wait with Tanner good boys sit stay we'll be right back after a short pause well four to be exact I Hi, this is Tim Link, animal communicator and pet expert and host of Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. Have you ever wanted to know what your pet is really thinking? Do you want to find out if they truly understand what you're trying to tell them? Ever wish you could build a better understanding and closer relationship with your pet? Well, now you can. Learning to communicate with animals is a four-part on-demand workshop. In the workshop, you'll learn the essential techniques that are necessary to communicate with animals, including what is animal communication, breathing correctly to achieve the perfect state to communicate with your animals at a deeper level, using guided meditation exercises and method to communicate with animals, and how to send and receive information from your animals. So if you're wanting to learn how to communicate and connect with your animals at a deeper level, visit PetLifeRadio.com forward slash workshop and purchase and download Learning to Communicate with Animals. You'll be glad you did. They are my family. They understand me. That's 
I Love My Pets, the new single by Mark Winter, available on iTunes. Having a rough day? Longing for the dog days of summer? Think your fun furry friend lives a dog's life? Well, find out everything you're begging to know as Pet Life Radio presents It's a Doggy Dog World with pet expert and award-winning author Liz Palaika. Every dog has his day, and you'll find out how to make your dog's day fun and rewarding every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Hi, this is Dick Van Patten with Megan Blake and Super Smiley. And we're back on a Super Smiley adventure with Smiley, his friend Tanner, and author Lou Spirito. And Lou, is Tanner there with you? I keep referring to him like he's right, he right is. here. Tanner, <laughs> yeah, he is. He is. He can't hear you, but I didn't want to put you on speaker, but he's over there in his bed, kind of. Today's not a great day for him because the wind is up, and we've gotten oh, past really? the car issue. Okay. But he doesn't like the Santa Ana winds when the wind chimes blow and all that. That, As you know, we get that in Malibu a lot. He'd rather not. He's, like, like I said, a really sensitive guy, and that's the last big thing we still work on. And that was actually how I knew I had turned the corner with him, was we had a really bad Santa Ana period in the fall of 2009. And my father-in-law had stopped by for a visit, and while he was having dinner with us, I had to give him the Heimlich maneuver. He ate a cookie while he was talking, oh, and then he couldn't get it out, and he was flailing and turning white and red and his wife was screaming and my wife was shrieking and poor Tanner had his head wedged so far under the table I thought I'd never get him out. So coupled with the Santa Anas, that night he insisted on coming into my bed for comfort. Wow. He woke me oh. up, spent the night in my bed and I didn't get a lick of sleep but I was thrilled. I look yep. at that as an honor when an animal that has been way on the other side or even a like a horse, my horse Starfire had been terribly abused when I got him. He's actually going to slaughter. And when he picked me, and I know you know what I mean by mm-hmm. that, when an animal picks you, there's no other way to look at it but just, just an honor and a, a reassurance, a reaffirmation that, that you're on the right path, at least at that moment, right? Yeah, I was no longer too scary to live with. I had turned a corner. <laughs> That's, I, I saw it as a sign. I, that was my sign. Oh, and, very you know, then I knew good. to keep doing what you're doing and you'll get there. So Right. And that was one of my questions. Was there an aha moment for you or was it like taking two steps forward and one back? And you said it was sort of like both, that you did move forward and back, forward and back. But then this was your affirmation moment, right? Yeah, that was the triumph. And it followed, you know, we had had a really terrible day when we took a drive to Newport Beach in a brand new car. And Tanner had just, he was like a volcano that day. He had thrown up three or four times and I got upset. And Eugenie was mad at me for being angry at the dog and making a mess cleaning up. And we got to Newport and some woman gave me a hard time about bringing a pit bull to Newport Beach and I should have let it go. And being an angry guy, I didn't let it go. So I wound up scrapping with her. It was just a terrible, the worst day, the worst day we ever had with Tanner. And it wasn't that long after that, that we, you know, I guess a couple months where I thought, boy, I'll never get a handle on this. And then a couple months later, I turned the corner and Tanner crawled into my bed and I thought, well, maybe then, maybe I will. Maybe it can all turn out okay. And Lou, you know, you're talking about that terrible day. You're saying it was a terrible day, a terrible day. But another way to look at it, which I'm sure you do look at it now, is that that was a day where all your buttons were being pushed. That was probably when you were getting into graduate school or you were just about to graduate from that, that <laughs> level of, <laughs> that level right. of school. Every- I mean, and right. past. That's what that is what is so cool about these animals. I love that they are such teachers on such a deep and intimate level. Right. Anybody who thinks they're not just isn't paying attention. That's right. That's right. That's what I always say. You've got to look at your pet and pay attention. They will offer you worlds and worlds of insight about yourself. And Lou, it's not just about sharing your journey, which we are doing and which is massive, but it's not only about that. It's also about actively giving back. You're working with animal rescue groups with your book as well, right? 
That's right, Megan. We, you know, I, I knew right away before before there ever was a book that if this did come to pass and we had a book that I wanted to give some of the proceeds to Animal Rescue. You know, that was just a no-brainer for me because mm-hmm. without Animal Rescue, I wouldn't have Tanner. And right. people just do such great work, and that's what we're doing. We've, we've got two things going. One is 10% of all our proceeds are going to be donated to Animal Rescue, and I'm pleased to say the first one is going to be Malibu Pet Companions, who is, an, an, as you know, a nonprofit here in Malibu with some of the local vets who provide free vet care for the animals at the Agoura Shelter. So, that's very cool. Yeah. You know, that seemed to me like a great thing. They're going to be part of my first author night, which is going to be a Diesel Books on April 25th at 7 o'clock. So Malibu Pet Companions, we invited them to come on board and give a little talk about what they do and raise some awareness and hopefully some money for their cause. So in addition to giving away the profits, we've come up with, and this a friend, a good friend, right now, Dan, who's Catherine's husband, suggested that we, and it turned into called the Gimme Shelter Campaign, where we're inviting rescue groups to help us, to partner with us and raise more money for their group. So all we ask them to do is kind of put a blurb about the book and a little photo of Tanner on the cover and tell people about the book and we give them a special discount code and if any of their members go and actually get a copy of Gimme Shelter, we give them a discount off the cost of the book and we donate a dollar per book to their rescue cause. So we're trying to do the best we can and our goal is to sell a lot of books so we can give away a lot of money. That's very cool. And so tell everybody where they can find your book so we can all participate by just simply buying the book, right? So where do we find it? Well, the book is available at Amazon in ebook and digital version. And by the end of next week, it'll be available. It's already available as a paperback on Barnes & Noble online. You can order it through your local bookstore. And by the end of next week, it should be on iTunes and Kobo Reader and Sony Reader and Nook. We're just getting the final conversions done. So it will be on all the digital outlets. It will be available in bookstores and at Amazon. And uh, for the animal groups, if there's any animal groups out there that are interested, they can get a hold of me through you. Or should I give them an email where they can email oh, me and find out about yeah, the Gimme Shelter give an campaign? Email, yeah, email, website, whatever you want to give out. Absolutely. Sure. The best way to get a hold of me would be at TannerStory at gmail.com or go to the website, which is www dot Louis Spirito dot com L O U I S S P I R I T O dot com and there'll be information about the Gimme Shelter campaign. Basically all you do is I give you a discount code for your group and you're good to go. And the rest depends on your fans and supporters and we're hoping to make a difference. We've gotten several rescue groups on board and it's only been a week and we're hoping to help a lot of people. So very, that would very be fun. cool Lou. Very cool and I'm so happy to have you here on Pet Life Radio on a super smiley adventure to share your message. But as you know if Smiley and I can do anything else to help you. We are totally on your team. We would, and we're going to try to be at both of your book signings. You have two coming up in Malibu. Tell everybody your book signings right now. Give us the information. We have April 25th at Diesel Books, which is in Civic Center Way in Malibu. Um, great little local bookstore. I should probably give the address. It's at Thursday, April 25th at 7 p.m. It's Diesel Books. 3410 Civic Center Way in Malibu, 90265. And the bookstore phone number is 310-456-9961. And that's going to be with Malibu Pet Companions. It'll be a book signing, a reading from the book, and a Q&A with refreshments provided by the Godmother Cafe. Delicious. Oh, man. Yeah, and her food is amazing. You've got to come meet Lou and Tanner, but my goodness, that Godmother Cafe, they've got some good food going on there, don't they? That's <laughs> a really, really good bribe, right? Yeah, Dolores really is another... Good. Uh, yeah, yeah good bribe for people to show up. I love that. And then you've got, got another signing, Malibu at Point Doom at the Bank of Books, right? That's in Bank May, right? Bank of Books will be Saturday at May 18th at 1 p.m. And the really cool thing about the Bank of Books event is that following the Bank of Books event at 2 o'clock, there will be an adoption with the L.A. County Animal Shelter from Agoura Hills. We're very grateful that the people at Point Doom Plaza. And the Bank of Books is Point Doom Village on Heather Cliff Road in Malibu, 90265, and their phone number is 310-457-5699. Both those bookstores, Diesel Books, Malibu, and Bank of Books, Malibu, you can find them online, too, and there be yeah, information bank, there. Yeah, both stores are, are very supportive, but Smiley and I just did a poetry reading at Bank of Books. We read our yeah, I read a very the cool poetry. place. Yeah, about animals, and then Michael Madsen, a film star, was just on my show, and he's going to be doing his book signing. So we love Bank of Books and want to give them a big shout-out also for supporting Yeah, they're animals. great. Yeah. We're lucky we have two. We're going against the trend here in Melbourne with stores closing everywhere. We have little bookstores opening. So, right, yeah, right. we urge everybody to try and, if you want to, and you want to meet Tanner and have him sign your book, he has his own little paw print stamp that he does. <laughs> we, he'll sign your book, I'll sign your book. 
you can ask me all the hard questions about why my wife didn't leave me when I was such a jerk. We'll do our best to answer everything. We'll I do our best. That. And the second bank of books is going to have the adoption. And for us, that's really meaningful. We're so glad the owners of the center agreed because Tanner did come from a Gurus shelter. And we just feel like that's the right thing to do. We're going to try and do this at every event we do anywhere we do it and hopefully get a group involved every time we have something going on. Very, very cool. I love that. And I love also in your book, it's not only your story that's extremely inspirational, but also you have reference materials as well, like on trainers and behaviorists, on health issues like heat stroke. And um, here's what I thought was really interesting was the information on pit bull attacks. Of course, I love pit bulls. I know that many of them are just so gentle like Tanner. They were the original nanny dog. Decades ago, mm-hmm. they were the RCA Victor dog. And they were the there was a pit bull who was the cute little dog that trailed around with the little kids in the TV show Little Rascals, which was maybe... Right, that was Petey with the black eye. long time ago. He's an iconic dog and he's a pit bull. But in your book, you talk about 10 people a year are killed by dogs and out of those 10, only about two are pit bulls. And most people would guess it was like 100%, all of them. Again, that's the misconception, right? Oh, it's a big misconception. And part of the problem, and every people who have dogs and follow the dog rescue world at all know... You know, dogs have had their turn. German Shepherds had their turn. Dobermans had their turn. Rottweilers had their turn. Akitas had their turn for a while in the 80s. And pit bulls are the dog du jour. And a lot of the people who want a scary-looking dog aren't the best owners for those dogs. They're not treating the dog in a way to, to nurture the animal. They're creating a dog with a scared, fearful personality, and these just happen to be strong, athletic dogs, and so that's a bad right. combination. But they're very gentle. You have a much better chance of being killed by a rattlesnake or lightning than you do by a pit bull, and uh, the media should give us a break on this, and at least if they're going to say a dog did a bad thing, give us the context and say where the dog was, who the owner was, paint the picture a little clearer so we know maybe it wasn't 100% the dog's fault. Right, and again, like we said earlier, the dogs don't prejudge, so I think that's another lesson we could learn. Maybe don't don't prejudge the book by its cover. I love oh, that. Oh, for sure. Yeah, and once for again, sure. Lou, I'm going to try to come. Smiley and I are going to be at your book signings on, say the dates again, there's April 25th uh, and May 8th. April 25th at 7 o'clock at Diesel Books in Malibu. That's a Thursday night. And Saturday, May 18th at 1 p.m. at Bank of Books, also in Malibu at Point Doom Village. Quickly, another famous pit bull that I just got the flyer this week. My sister, who's a rescue dog person, she's also a lieutenant in a police department back east. She pinned me a photo of Stubby, who was the first and most decorated war dog in the history of the U.S. military. Really? Wow. And I think pit bulls also were the official dog breed of the Marines for a while, too. They were on all the posters. Yes, they were. Yeah, they're very loyal, loyal, wonderful dogs if they're handled and trained, you know, to be sociable, like all dogs should be. And Lou, Smiley inspires me all the time, as you know, and he tells me things to share on the show. So what does Tanner want to tell us? What does Tanner have to say before we go? Well, I think you covered one of the big things. Tanner wants to tell people, yes, don't judge us by how we look. That's a good lesson for dogs, and it's a great lesson for people, that get to know us a little bit, see what we're about, be gentle, kind, and loving, and I bet you get that back in return. I love it. I love it, Tanner. Good words of advice, Tanner. Smiley's giving you a a high five over here. (laughs) Well, Tanner's much smarter than his human guardian, so... (laughs) Uh, he's, he's much smarter. Trust me, Megan. I've given, and my wife and Tanner are much smarter than the their crazy uh, Italian. So I figured that out a long time ago. Okay, very, that makes you pretty smart too, then, Lou. Okay, cool. And, smart um, enough and, to know I'm not. And Lou, again, I love how you shared the story of Tanner, of your dog, but then you've also woven it into helping people with anger management or with any issues that they may be working on. And and I want to share that Smiley has his super Smiley flash mob for pet adoption that's been touring the country, energizing pet adoption. But because our message is so positive, groups that have nothing to do with animals like the Boys and Girls Club or people who help, groups who help humans with cancer, they've asked us to bring the flash mob. So we've created the super Smiley flash mob for kindness to help people and children learn to be kind to everyone, animals and other people. And I want to share that you can everyone can see our YouTube videos at youtube.com slash Megan Blake. So I want to invite everybody to watch our super smiley flash mob for kindness. 
And I've seen also, videos and they're great. Oh, thanks, Lou. Thank you so much. And I want to give a big four paws up and thank you to Luz Burrito and to the rescued pit bull Tanner for joining us on a super smiley adventure. Thank you, Lou and Tanner. Well, thank you, Megan. And thank you, everyone on your end for giving us the time and a place to spread the message that pit bulls make great pets and you don't have to be an angry guy. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And we will be at your book signing. So, and that's going to be in May and April. And give us your website so they can just, people can just check that one more time. You can find most of the information will be at www.luisspirito.com, L-O-U-I-S-S-P-I-R-I-T-O.com. And if you want to email us about the Gimme Shelter campaign to help rescue dogs, best email is Tanner's Story, T-A-N-N-E-R-S-S-T-O-R-Y at gmail.com. Very cool, Lou. Hope we hear from you. Thank you, Lou and Tanner, for joining us on our radio show and for all of us here at Pet Life Radio on a Super Smiley Adventure. Until next time, woof and super smiles. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.